This is KNEB.TV Ag News from the Western Hearing Clinic Ag Desk. Western Hearing Clinic, the panhandle's choice for better hearing, helping you hear what matters most. From a territory to a state, Nebraska is celebrating its 150th birthday this year, and KNEB Ag will be looking back throughout the year at the farmers, ranchers, technology, and more, which grew the panhandle of Nebraska to what it is today. Today we're looking at weeds in the panhandle, or as dryland cropping specialist Cody Creech at the UNL Panhandle Research and Extension Center in Scotts Bluff quoted from Ralph Waldo Emerson, What is a weed? A plant whose virtues have not yet been discovered. He explained how weeds moved into our area. A lot of the weeds we have out here were either that they were brought in with crops at some point, or they are actually a, a native plant that, that have evolved. One example is a downy brome or cheatgrass, which is prevalent across the, the country out here. Uh, that is a weed that was likely brought in with you know some grain imports, likely wheat, in the uh, early 1800s. It was first noticed in New York and Pennsylvania in, in, in 1861 and spread across the entire North America. Creech explained why weeds don't die out but continue to grow and spread. Weeds have always been really uh, opportunistic plants. Uh, they they uh, see a void or, a, or an opportunity and they try to fill that void. Um, uh, so plants like, like a cheatgrass thrive when we uh, uh, produce winter, uh, winter wheat because the cheatgrass uh, comes up in the fall at the same time as the wheat does and so we, uh, we can't control it at that point. Now if we were growing spring wheat, it's likely that we could easily control Rome because we could go and spray it out before we uh, planted the spring wheat. But because we are in a winter wheat growing a region, those weeds try to get in with the, the crop and try to hide with the crop and make it difficult to uh, control. Creech said non-native weeds have been carried here with other seeds and native ones have moved up from the west coast to east. He gave us an example of one of the more unique ways in which weeds arrived in the panhandle. Kosha is is a plant that was actually brought over from Eurasia as an ornamental. People thought that it looked nice um, in the fall because its foliage would turn a nice bright or a red or orange, and so they were planting it in their flower beds. However, you know, it quickly spread and uh, became, you know, a weed essentially in the early 1900s. Now, of course, it's spread all acro uh, across the West and is a pest that we have out here that, uh, you know, that we uh, deal with and is kind of what we know as, you know, um, one of those tumbleweed uh, plants that we, we have to deal with that make the West uh, what the West is. Who could have guessed that tumbleweeds rolled into the area as ornate plants? Creech said farmers eventually arrived at herbicides to combat the weeds. So herbicides were developed and they started coming around in the 1930s and 1940s. Uh, the one that we we know really well and we still know uh, and we still use today is 2,4-D. It was uh, developed in the 1930s and became commercially available in, in the early 1940s. It was a component of the Agent Orange that was used in wars. And after the wars, they were able to kind of develop that and discovered its properties as a herbicide. And uh, it's been used ever since and is, is probably one of the most used herbicides because of its cost and its effectiveness in, in uh, controlling broadleaf weeds. We've been talking with Cody Creech, dry land cropping specialist, on a history of weeds in Nebraska. With KNBTV.news, I'm Chabella Guzman, and 150 Years of Nebraska Agriculture is sponsored by Kelly Bean, proud to be a tri-state region tradition for 90 years.